Welcome to the Social Selling Linking into Sales podcast. Myself, Martin Brossman. I'm Greg Heyer. And I'm Elise Archer. We have a great show today covering AI, bots, social selling, and we might talk about things that make Elon Musk nervous, which is my interest today. So we're going to start a little bit and I'm going to hand it over to Greg for some news. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we got a couple of things that have been happening here uh, lately, uh, you know, that have kind of been affecting how uh, how LinkedIn is working and their relationship in the uh, in the greater business community. Uh, well, th the first thing is that uh, if you hadn't heard, LinkedIn was in a major lawsuit uh, where they were basically sued by uh, a company called HiQ. And what HiQ does, which is a very, very cool tool, is that they actually uh, will take and, and look at public profiles that are available on the web uh, from LinkedIn and uh, try to determine the likelihood of you leaving your job. Okay, and they take this data and they sell it back to the, a business. So something large like GE, for example, I believe is one of their clients, and they want to kind of get a heads up when somebody's leaving because you know, you know, employee attrition is something that is, um, you know, pretty expensive uh, when when you come to think of it. It's an expense that, that businesses have. So LinkedIn said, "Whoa, well, hold on a second. You're taking data off of our platform and then reselling it. That's that's against the terms and conditions. You can't do that." So uh, basically, they and uh, they went to uh, LinkedIn went and, and sued and and put a uh, cease and desist out on it, and and uh, HiQ went and counter queued, uh, counter sued, and they uh, and, right? and they and they won, and they won. Basically, it, what it says is that it, the reason why they won is because these your public profile, if you have set it up correctly, uh, is available on the web, and you do not need to log into LinkedIn to use it. So therefore, it's open game, right? Because it's available out there on the web. OK, mm -hmm. and I fully agree. And I'm ecstatic about the ruling that the judge, the federal judge actually uh, came out with this. Um, this is extremely great. Uh, the thing is, I, you know, it, it, it kind of borders on, you know, First Amendment rights and things like that. And so it was definitely interesting to see uh, this actually turn out the way that it did. So I'll put a link in the show notes to that so that we can uh, take a look and read more about that. There's a number of great stories, whether it's on Fortune or Ars Technica. There's a real there's some really good stuff out there about it. Um, second thing, which just kind of was announced today, is that LinkedIn is slowly rolling out and quietly rolling out a little notification light in your messaging uh, app uh, on the desktop that lets you know when somebody is online using LinkedIn, so or when a when a contact of yours is online using LinkedIn. So you know, on Facebook, uh, you get a little green light next to their next to their face when you're looking at the uh, when they, whether it's when the messenger or if it's on the desktop version. Uh, but LinkedIn's now finally, uh, after God knows how many years, uh, actually put this little feature out. So it's a fun little thing. You know, if you're trying to reach uh, somebody you're connected to on, on, on LinkedIn, trying to get their attention, uh, at least now you get a little notification that lets you know that they are online. So those are two big stories that kind of happened over, uh, you know, between uh, this podcast and, and the previous one. So um, definitely take advantage of that. I'll put a link in the show notes for you guys to read as well. The other thing I want to mention is the video from the mobile phone, Greg. You, oh, you, yes. we, that's to me something important because I just got someone saying they're getting lots of videos and they're trying to hide someone. So, uh, and <laughs> yeah, they you do can it. Using LinkedIn so, then. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Uh, you can uh, LinkedIn. Uh, it should be rolled out to everybody now. Uh, if not, you'll have it shortly. Uh, but you can also upload native video to LinkedIn. I believe the limits on, uh, at ten minutes. Uh, but you are able to take an upload video now natively to LinkedIn, uh, which is, again, something that a lot of platforms have been doing for a while. But now yeah, LinkedIn is finally on board. And I think uh, we do want to watch it to find out how it affects people in the feed. Because remember when they allowed you to push all the Twitter to LinkedIn, it was the best way to get someone to hide all your content. So I think it's something we ought to, ought to watch and see what the feedback is of rate of flow of it because it does create a, another interrupt that occurs. And my view is everything we're doing in sales needs to be, is either going to be a welcome interruption or an unwelcome interruption. And we need to pay attention to that. So that's something I, I'm asking our listeners to give us some feedback on. What do you think? How often should it be so regular? Should it be once a day? Should it be once a week? What's your experience of it? So that's what I want to hear. Yep. Very good. And right. now let's talk about our sponsor, 
Uh, and Greg, would you tell them about some incredible online training and how they might benefit <laughs> till the end of this month by taking advantage of it? Well, you know, we have this really great fundamentals and social selling course that is available right now at socialselling.training. And if you are def if if you need a robust course uh, to kind of give you the ins and out ins and outs of social selling and a fundamental understanding of how we approach social selling, then definitely take this course. It's 67 lessons over five hours of content, uh, and you can it's easy to get through. Um, we have you know some some help that. Uh, th that's available inside of the course as well. We're going to be rolling out office hours uh, to, uh, for a couple times a month. You'll be able to come on. And, you know, anyone who's taken the course will be able to come in uh, and ask us questions uh, about the course and get a little a little more heads up and some coaching on social selling. Uh, it's a great opportunity. What I would recommend is that while Martin says that there's you know until the end of the month, you know the month's over in. Um, 12 days. So uh, we're going to scratch that. Okay. And we're going to say, if you're listening to the podcast, reach out to Martin or myself on LinkedIn. Don't do both. Just do one of us. Okay. So then you create confusion um, and ask us for a, for a promo code. Okay. Right. And I'm going to say, because we're in sales and need to create a sense of urgency for a limited time. And we're going to do it until we stop, Greg. So <laughs> So that's our, that's what I'll add to it. So uh, at least you can add something on to that and then we'll get to start with our show. Yeah, I'm going to make the deadline today. So if okay. you guys want to get that, the deadline is today just to make this as confusing as possible so, and screw the whole thing up. You know, it, it, just reach out to me and I'll just give you one. Yeah, just, just call Greg. Just, yeah, <laughs> don't call Martin. <laughs> okay, okay. We have an exciting show and we've been working to re-coordinate to get here for a while with a very, very busy powerhouse of a person that's moving to our area. And Greg, I'm going to let you do the introduction and I can hardly wait for this discussion to begin. All right. Very good. So uh, coming to us today is uh, Brandon and I just forgot how to pronounce his last name. Pronounce your last name, Brandon. Born Anson. Born Anson. All right. So a long he, Italian name. It's, it's tough. <laughs> that's you need a four letter last name like me. <laughs> I'm thinking about changing it to like Ryan or Smith, but we'll see. But now you're SEO optimized, so you're pretty good. Yeah, stay so, with it. Uh, so, so, um, so Brandon Bornanson is is uh, the co-founder and CEO of Seamless.ai. Uh, Seamless researches uh, perfect emails. Let me make sure I got this right. So <laughs> Seamless Research is perfect emails, phone numbers, uh, and insights for anyone in the world using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science. Uh, they're on a mission to help you create new relationships and opportunities faster than ever by using the, powerful, the power of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and si uh, sales data science. So definitely check out Seamless.ai. Uh, it's absolutely free to try out today. So he has... Uh, actually worked at a, a few places, worked with a number of places as well. So definitely want to um, hear more about that. Uh, Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me, guys. Uh, truly appreciate it. We're thrilled to be here to talk about social selling, AI, and chatbots. Absolutely. Let's scare Elon Musk a little bit, too. Yes. I think that's, <laughs> yes. that's exciting. I you guys something... get some sick pleasure out of that. I do. I do. Really well. Do. Well, you know, I, I wrote an article on machine learning to educate people on it. And the more I dug, dug into it is I realized we have great advancements that have occurred to bring us out of the AI winter into the AI spring, but it still seems to be evolved below the level of an amoeba. So I asked uh, Elon, Elon, Elon Musk the question, if we're below the level of amoeba, and you're saying Terminator's around the corner, I'm, I'm concerned of what would be the agenda for doing it because I'm finding some people trying to capitalize on people's fear of AI that's very disturbing. And I don't want to call them out, but I think there's a responsibility in letting people know, you know, we're at the very beginning of some of this stuff, and he's talking about what looks like the Terminator knocking at my door next week. So, uh, Brandon, I'll open with you being able to make your comment on it. And and I do want to – I respect his opinion. He's a very accomplished person. 
But I think no one's challenged him on this and said, wait a second, you know, what's going on in a public way? Yeah, no, uh, it, it's it's great commentary. We, we feel that you can do good with any new technology. Uh, look at uh, autonomous driving. A lot of people will hate it. A lot of people will love it. You know, I love it because I love to work 24 seven. So I want to be able to drive and work. I want to be able to drive at night and be able to sleep. So I'm a huge fan of that. Um, the same goes for leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to do good in sales. Um, if I could automatically, for example, read your social posts, Martin, and know what you like, what you dislike, uh, the things about you, you know, anything and everything that, that we can leverage and learn about you and your personality and your interests and hobbies and then apply that to creating rapport and connection, that's a great way to leverage AI. Um, also, you know, leveraging AI to tell us automatically what the company does, how they do it, the products that they sell, competitors, what they may be interested in buying today based on their, you know, search intent, based on what they're posting socially, you name it. So those are different ways to leverage machine learning and AI to empower salespeople and marketers and entrepreneurs to make a connection to these prospects, to these buyers. It doesn't have to be, oh, AI is going to replace the salesperson. AI and machine learning are going to empower salespeople and marketers to be more efficient and more, more effective at their jobs. And, and that's really the goal with all of this technology. Excellent. I'll, Elise, I'll let you dig into that. He was, he very politically was careful not to take on Elon Musk directly. I just want to say <laughs> hey, that respectfully there. <laughs> well, so for our listeners, Brandon, I think the thing I would be curious to hear about is over at Seamless.ai, explain to us exactly what you guys do with your technology there. How does it help empower salespeople? And in the back of my mind, I'm always wondering, how is it not replacing salespeople as well? So I want to hear it from your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, so 10,000 foot view, and I, I don't want to get into a big pitch about Seamless. So we, we want to help empower the world to connect. Our goal is that all these social networks and search engines, they, they create a profile of you, and then you have to connect with them, or you have to you know, add them as a friend or whatever. And Seamless is creating this search engine and professional network that empowers you to connect with anyone and uh, Seamless will research perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights for any professional in the world, leveraging artificial intelligence. So our goal is to help you maximize sales by automating everything that you're doing already. Sales prospecting, list building, appointment setting, CRM data entry, you name it. And uh, really what that means is we're just searching the entire universe for all this data about people and companies, bringing it together, analyzing it really quickly, and then figuring out the best way to connect with that person and email them, call them, uh, learn everything about that company and that person to connect, to build a new relationship, to close a new deal, to fill your pipeline, you name it. And it's funny because our sales emails, we do say, hey, this is Brandon with Seamless, the Terminator of business development. <laughs> so it's pretty funny that Elon Musk talks about the Terminator. Uh, but our goal is to help you, you know, build as many profitable relationships as fast as possible. And the core of our technology is, is AI and researching and analyzing millions of terabytes of data instant, instantly. Uh, so we're, we're excited to get everyone on the platform. So that's really, so it's interesting to me. So does it basically get you up until the point when you're having that first conversation as a sales professional with your prospect? It sounds like to me it's doing all the hunting on the front end. And I know that's a big part of what a lot of salespeople do. So that's, to me, that's my main interest is like, how much does it replace of what we do every day? How does it integrate with what we do? And at what point would the salesperson jump in and say, here I am, right? Yeah, so, so we want to automate everything up until sales execution. We know that 65, 70% of your time is wasted on non-research, such as list building, company research, contact research. How am I going to prospect this company? How am I going to prospect this contact? What am I going to say? What are they going to do? How do I personalize my social selling messages, my emails, my calls to these people? And the answer to that is all the data. So in one second, if you know, we want you to be able to automatically know all the accounts you should be selling to, automatically know all the contacts that you should be selling to based on the titles that buy your services, then Seamless will research and build all those lists of people at those accounts for you. And then if you click a button, we research, analyze, and validate the perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights. 
So our goal is to give you emails, phone numbers, and thousands of data points for every single contact and company that you need to be selling to. So say for example, Lise, you want to prospect Adobe. Seamless would automatically research for all the people that you need to sell to at Adobe. What does Adobe do? Okay, it's a you know, design software automation platform. Instead of at least having to go to the website, figure that out. Who are Adobe's competitors? What is the news saying about them? What are they talking about socially? What do they like? What do they dislike? Are they on the market for anything? Who is the key management? What are their financials? Who are all the people at the account that I should be selling to? Instead of you scouring millions of websites, we're going to do that with a click of a button. Hey, I need to sell to marketing people at Adobe. Boom. Seamless builds out everyone that you should be selling to at the, at the account and all the research to connect with that person personally. And then at the all the research on the company so that you can really uh, put together a strategic value driven engaged message to them via email, social touch, call, you name it. We want to automate all your research because I want to Lisa Martin and Greg to be social selling, calling and emailing 24 seven, not scouring the web. Like right now, there's no Google for sales, if you think about it. There's no search engine that finds all this data about people and companies. We're building that search engine and professional network that automates that entire process with one search. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients who would really love that. Just saying. I, I have yet to meet a salesperson who loves the research unless they're trying to creatively avoid doing their work. Now, the thing that I think is interesting is you say you don't see this replacing the role of a salesperson even no. like five, 10, no. 15 years, but, but it seems like it could, right? I mean, you're getting people, you're getting them all the information they need. Um, and with the sales process becoming more and more automated and consumers finding more and more of the information they need online, do you not think it could potentially go in that direction five or 10 years from now? It's a good question. So you, at the end of the day, you're going to leverage all this data that like a seamless AI or, a, or another platform provides you or that you research on your own. You're going to funnel that into social selling automation, email automation, and calling automation platforms. So that's going to execute all your outbound activity. Mm -hmm. But then, like, who's going to meet with them? You know, they're not going to have Siri meet with them to answer questions. Like, they, they have to meet with a salesperson. And we find that the most value is being able to be in front of prospects, meeting with them, talking with them, whether it be socially on the phone or, or pitching via video or conference line, you name it. So our goal is to just help you get to that meeting, get to that meaningful relationship building uh, point or activity as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, 10, 20 years from now, uh, I think we got to just get really good at, at figuring out how to constantly add value. I think companies will always buy with humans and buying with relationship building and if not, then we're all just going to have to learn how to program to figure out how to program the AI and the bots. And that's why, I, honestly, I started teaching myself how to program purposely, uh, you know, just for a decade from now, you know, we, we never know where that will be. So, mm -hmm. so Brandon, are you, learning, are you learning Python? No, no. I'm So the most used uh, programming language right now across the entire web is, is JavaScript. So okay. I'm, you know, I'm, our whole platform is built full stack JavaScript back end and front end because it's the most widely used and, and the most long-term strategy. And that's why we picked that stack. So I'm, I'm starting to learn full stack JavaScript from like the hours of nine to 11 at night. It's, oh. it's kind of terrible at the beginning. It, it's miserable, but, um, I could, I could talk with my developers and programmers more intelligently now, which is a bonus. So Great. let me ask you this: um, How how do you think Elon Musk would use something would use something like this for the salespeople who are probably trying to reach out and maybe sell cars to executives because we know the price point is actually kind of high on a on a Tesla, uh, yeah. or or even on a on a solar roof because you know he's got solar panels now for for or solar shingles. Um, you know, could how would he use AI in that sense to? Totally. So yeah. just being how, how focused Musk is. And by the way, we have professionals from Tesla on the seamless platform, which I was like really ecstatic about. I'm like, how is this? Like, what are these? How are they using? Like I, I called them a few times. I haven't gotten them on the phone. Like, how are you using seamless at Tesla? Uh, but, you know, 
I, I would say the first thing that he's going to do, just being an, an automation obsessed entrepreneur, like he doesn't want anyone researching, right? So he's going to automate the account list building. Everyone that Tesla or that Solar City should be selling to, automate all the accounts that they should be selling to, automate all the contacts they should be selling to. Then he would want to automate all the insights. Like, how do I salespeople not have to do manual research? I need to automate all that, that research automatically. And one way to do it with social selling, which is like how we do it at Seamless is, um, Martin, so if you were to read my social media posts, or Greg, you would know that I love the Ohio State Buckeyes because I'm from Ohio. You would know that I love working 24 seven because I'm just crazy. You would know that I, um, I, I have a boat. So we have a boat and we do a lot of like wakeboarding and, and uh, water skiing like with the Seamless team. Mm -hmm. um, and like you would know that by reading my social posts. So Elon and, and like where we're thinking is like, how do we automate the research of reading everything that you're posting about socially? And then you could leverage AI and machine learning to figure out, okay, Brandon talks a lot about the Ohio State Buckeyes. So the keyword density is really high for Ohio State Buckeyes for running, for wakeboarding. Then you would figure out, okay, is he talking about those things positively or negatively? Like is Brandon talking about these things in social with positive sentiment or negative sentiment? And you want to talk to Brandon with all the things that he's talking a lot about positively. So if Martin wanted to prospect me, he'd be like, hey, Brandon, it's Martin at the Linked Social Selling Podcast. By the way, I saw that the Ohio State Buckeyes are ranked number one. Can't wait for this season, by the way. I know that Seamless just opened up a new office in Charlotte. So like he would leverage AI to research things about me personally, things about the company personally, what's going on in the news, what's going on with the company, who are we hiring, what are we doing? And then that way he could automate all their outreach. And when it comes to, you know, after the appointment, I don't know how you're going to automate the, like giving the pitch. Uh, that's really interesting. I, that's where at least like, I, I don't think right now that can be done. You could automate the content. So if Martin and I were on a pitch, Seamless knows how to hear Martin say, I'm not interested. And then boom, like, uh, we launched a technology called salesobjections.com, which is an AI engine to, to, to transcribe conversations and then tell you the content of what to say. So if we were on a pitch and Martin's like, I'm not interested. Hey, Martin, completely understand. You know, if you were interested, you would have called me. Or, hey, Martin, hey, I completely get that. Thousands of prospects said the same thing to me, and now they're, you know, increasing revenue by 300%, whatever it may be. So I don't know how Elon would automate the pitching part of that, I think we could leverage machine learning and AI to help guide us with scripts on what to say, how to say, to overcome different parts of the sales cycle. So you could fill the funnel with all the data, what to say, how to say it, book the appointment, empower the rep to crush that appointment with the prospect, and then crush sales objections to get that deal closed. And I got into a debate with someone uh, via LinkedIn about this. Oh. I never used a sales script before. Oh, your AI sales script bot, like I would never use it. And I'm like, you're using scripts every day. Mm -hmm. you, know, you run into, I'm not interested, no budget. I'm already working with someone. It's too expensive. You know, I need to talk to my boss. I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my husband. Uh, not a good time. Call me back later. Send me more info. The, the whole nine. And um, you, you could really leverage smart driven content powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence to know what to say and how to say it. Great. Brandon, uh, that's really Thank important. You. you said because he is using scripts, there's scripts in his head that he's learned from experience is the piece you're bringing up. You know, if he, if he found a way to solve a problem before, he's not going to say in his head, I will not use that because I used it before. So I think that's quite insightful as well. I want to ask one question here, and that is, how do you know you're working with something that's good quality AI driven or not? Because uh, I've worked with uh, Emery and we've looked at some projects. He does some consulting on identifying uh, the quality of AI. And some of the stuff we've seen, it looks like this is just a search. I mean, I was, was looking at how Watson's supposed to use bots with somebody. And yeah. it was like, my gosh, isn't that done better by just Googling it? You know, is there any AI present at all? Is there any machine learning presence? 
I think that's important for a salesperson, especially independent, picking a tool. How do they identify? Because there's a lot of uh, snake oil, I think, coming up. And uh, and I told you, Watson, to me, might be one of those in the sense that they've made it so convoluted to use it. It's not it's not necessarily maybe they've thought through uh, uh, they've thought through usability or is it even using machine learning yeah great question so building a search engine is is really difficult right and um, you, there's a, so much machine learning because we we built a search engine it took us two and a half years to build a people and company search engine so I know how difficult that is and there's a lot of machine learning and AI that goes into figuring out the right algorithms to deliver uh, the, the best results based on search intent. Because if you put, you know, Martin in a search, like you, that could come up with a book that could come up with people that could come up with places that could come up with awards. There's so much intent driven analysis around that. Um, and I, I do believe Watson and IBM is at the forefront of a lot of that work. And it's just, it look at this point, it's very basic and intermediate. Right, where you're like, wow, you know, you, you may think finding a perfect email and phone number for any professional in the world, like, oh yeah, that that's really easy. Well, like, okay, there's thousands of different email patterns. There's personal emails. There's business emails. There's thousands of different ways that you can write your signature to figure out if it, is it an office direct line, is it a main line, is it a personal line, is it a mobile line, uh, is this their second cell phone, their first cell phone. So like even the basics, basic of things that seem very like, oh, that should be easy. You have to leverage neural linguistic programming. You have to leverage deep learning to analyze these, these data points thousands of times and then train these supercomputers like what IBM is using to, to read and parse it. Um, so I think, you know, we're at the early stages of it all and it's it's growing and and we're going to get more and more advanced um just kind of like autonomous driving where you see like okay we'll help you go 80 percent of the way and then 90 percent of the way 100 percent of the way but everyone is kind of throwing out ai and machine learning into every you know just like a marketing automation when marketing automation was big five ten years ago you know, oh we're doing marketing automation marketing automation, marketing automation now it's like social automation sales automation and you know, today it's AI this, AI that. Uh, so you just got to be careful. And I would look at reviews and I'd also use the product. And by using the product, you'll know, you know, is this really using machine learning and artificial intelligence to help me do my job faster and better? Uh, and at the end of the day, we just have to help you do your job smarter, better, bigger, faster. Yeah. And we'll probably see coffee with AI added. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is like everybody. I'm a supercomputer now. It's just helps me run many miles. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think, Brandon, when we spoke with you, however many months back it was, I don't know, five, six, whatever it was, um, you guys had been working on a system where it, it, it was like a um, prospecting call type of thing where I guess it was AI or a bot where they would call and they would actually engage with the prospect and have a, remember that? Am I yeah, totally yeah, losing my mind? Yeah. Did you guys I, know uh, that? So I would update was, on that. Yeah. So we were, we we're building a technology to read scripts. Um, so there's, there's a lot of like call center companies that are ahead of the game of us, like with being able to sound like a human talk, analyze the data and then respond. Um, we, we love, I love building that technology. It's really fun and cool um, because I think there's a lot of applications there, like especially for like people that are deaf or people that can't communicate well. I think there's a ton of application to empowering communication, um, leveraging this, this technology. Um, but what it came down to was we're, we're making, we're helping so many companies with our data intelligence and leveraging machine learning and AI to find the right intelligence on people and companies to empower you to connect with them, that we, we're a small startup. So if we try to do, if we try to build the world's best intelligence on people and companies, plus do a call automation technology, plus an email automation technology, we're just spread too thin. So um, we shut down that alpha product to focus exclusively on building seamless, our um, really sales automation platform that helps you you know, find perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights for, for anyone. But it was a, a lot of fun. Um, 
it's really hard. It's really hard to do. <laughs> you had to kill her. I mean, smart focuses everything, right? But she was yeah. cool. That makes me sad. <laughs> Well, you know, Brandon, I will mention that because I'm I'm getting more robocalls where uh, I can tell that it's I a, hate those robocalls. It's, it's a bot, you know, where they'll call by accident. I have several numbers that come in, so they'll call on different ones. I'll give different responses, and they'll respond in a different way. So, you know, to me, that's the that's the dark side of all this, you know. Yeah, the the problem with that stuff is 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 it kills like it's going to kill the phone if you think yeah. about it. Um, like it could kill the prospecting phone if these robocalls keep calling our prospects. Like for example, just the past two years, I started using the the block on my iPhone, which I never used before. Um, like because I'm getting a thousand calls a day, and if you know it's a robocall, I block it on my phone. And you know I'm worried about the robocalls, and I'm also worried about the um, you, you know the technologies that do the auto dialing. Mm -hmm. Like they'll call ten thousand people for you. They'll pick up and then they'll connect you. Like they'll have like agents that will do all the dialing for you. I'm worried that those types of technologies could could eventually kill the phone yep. for our salespeople. And that's my biggest concern because the conversion rates over the phone are already low. I mean, email and calling, the conversion rates are are about the same, right? Like two percent, one percent, three percent they'll pick up. It's just emailing, you don't have to do as much work. Calling, you know, you don't want to sit there, make a hundred calls, only connect with three people. And I'm worried all these automated mass dialers, um, you know, are like, I, I know them all. Connect and sell, connect leader, monster connect. These are all great technologies, but if everyone starts to use them, all the prospects are going to get called on 50,000 times. And if someone connects through and, and they pick up the other people that are on the phone with them, they just turn them off and whatnot. So really concerned about that and hopefully it doesn't it doesn't come come to that fruition well i just want to add one more thing i already since i'm the primary business very seldom in picking up the phone unless i think it has a high probability of being in my area and uh and then when i do if i i've got a strategy you'll know so it goes i go hello hello i give two hellos and then hang up and then yeah. if it was a client, you I know, can apologize. You know it's you know? just going to beep, and then you're going to sit there, and you know it's some cold call. Yeah, and so the the I think this is important that this is not what you're doing. This is not what you're supporting. And this is, to me, you know, if, if Elon Musk is worried about something, I'm more worried about this than the Terminator showing at my door tomorrow. You know, and, totally. and the misuse of just mass interruptions – of people's attention without any earned permission. Yeah, and I think I think there what we could do is we could instead of using live agents, I think we could use smart driven technology that can work through the the operators and the systems and then connect you live instantly. Elon Musk would say like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's have agents dial and then once someone picks up, connect. But he'd be like, that's not good enough because. If we call Martin, Martin's going to wait three seconds and then he's going to hang up. How do we leverage technology to automatically connect you to Martin right when he picks up versus like human intervention? I think that would be the way that I would want to build that, which I'm sure all these companies who I really like um, are, are building and, and working towards. Now, it would be, uh, I guess you could assume that maybe you have a little bit of information before that call uh, is actually made. Uh, at least you'd hope that, you know, using some AI about, you know, who we're calling and then um, uh, and then match up the call with the right rep as well, based on, based on, you know, different characteristics we've, we've taken from our rep. Right. So it, it kind of goes into like how crystal uh, crystal nose works uh, where, it, you know, it might be a little bit of reverse, but you know, how can you match up the personalities better? Um, mm -hmm. So that way, you know, here's the person that's most likely to be able to close this particular sale. Um, yeah. And to that point, what, what's great is like what we really focus on is, you know, we're sick. We will, we want to fix like bad salespeople and, and bad marketers by researching all that data on Greg, on Elise, on Martin, before you make that call, before you send out that email, like, because we know if we can automate all that hard work and get you all the research, like Martin's interests, hobbies, common connections. I, we can even figure out political beliefs. 
we're using machine learning and artificial intelligence to figure out like, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Do you want the school to be approved in your county or not? Like all this stuff is publicly available and we're aggregating it all and analyzing it and figuring out not how to use it for bad, but how can we empower salespeople and marketers to know these things about everyone that they're calling and emailing and social selling to, to be smarter about how to engage, how to create commonality and, and how to um, do that outreach. So say for instance, I found Martin on um, LinkedIn and I was, you know, we, we used a, a AI and machine learning to automatically figure out your hobbies and our common connections. I'd be like, hey, Martin, I know that you like boating. You're in Raleigh. You know, have you gotten out this summer? By the way, I read your new, new uh, I read you launched this new social selling class. How much is it? That's really exciting. I want to share it with my, my network. Machine learning and AI could tell me like everything that you're talking about everything that you're interested in, everything about your company. And that way in one second, the person could see you on, so, on social media, know everything in one click about you and then how to engage and how to connect. And that's really a smart way to leverage intelligence, artificial intelligence to create better relationships with people. How many times do you accept a LinkedIn invite and then you get a bullshit uh, cold pitch right away? Oh, like, yeah. I, I get 10 of those a day. Ten of those a day, except bullshit pitch, except bullshit pitch. And I'm just like, what is this? Like, That's... It, five years ago, there were more personal LinkedIn invitations than there are now. And we have more technology now than we did five years ago. Yeah, so that's not social selling. Just to kind of remind folks yeah. about that who are listening to the show. We know our listeners, they don't do that. <laughs> that's social bludgeoning in my view. <laughs> that's, I want to bring that up because I had a great experience with an honest question at one of my talks where someone came up and they said, you know, I'm connecting to these CEOs and they're responding to me. And then I'm offering that I'd like to sit down and talk to them. And they're not responding after that. And, and the poor guy, I kind of bit his head off uh, in the response because I said, that's called social seducing, not social courting. And it just came out of me. I couldn't help myself. I go, you, this is, you're doing practices that maybe 15 years ago were okay when we had more time, maybe 20. You better slow back this down and ask, how do I give five pieces of value to this person so great they'll want to know who this guy is before I ever take any of their time to meet with them? And, yeah, you know, I if your that. product doesn't have enough profit margin in to do it, you're selling a commodity and need to get out of that field. And it was really interesting because, and now I apologize, it was just an honest question. I just kind of snapped on him because it's like, this is what we want to get. You know, their time, if you aren't respecting their time, that an interruption takes time to respond, you don't understand your customer or your commodity. You know, you're you're just a commodity bludgeoning away like an old caveman. I want to ask one more question here. What, Brandon? What do you recommend for for salespeople who haven't started using some of these tools that are so powerful in getting content? Where they should be focusing first? Obviously, your free offer is one of them. But where should they be focusing? Where should they be committing their learning so they aren't falling behind? Because I see salespeople who are in B2B sales that still, their LinkedIn profile looks like a lame data sheet. And they're still using what I call bludgeoning marketing to wear down people. And uh, and I, I just wanna say, where, where should they start? Where should they begin? Yeah, I think I think there's three three areas to begin. Um, and this is just for, for any salesperson that, that we talk to. One, you gotta automate your account list building and your contact list building. Um, you know, it's it's like your ideal customer persona. Who are all the accounts that you need to sell to? Who are all the contacts at those accounts you need to sell to? And you need to automate building that list with the Seamless or a DNB or LinkedIn or whatever that may be. You need to automate building the account list, building the contact list. Because once you have your ideal customer personas, then you can figure out how am I going to personalize my messaging to them. Then the third thing is the data on the accounts that you can leverage to connect with them. So what is the data at an account-based sales approach? What is the data that I can talk about the company? And I recommend three to five different, uh, three to five different factual points. Like 
like you had mentioned, you want to bring like five things to the table. Like I want to know what they sell. If I'm not, if I'm reaching out to them and I don't know what they sell, that's pathetic of me. Like that takes two seconds to learn and you can leverage technology to figure that out really quickly. What do they sell? What are their, their, their clients? Who are they selling to? What do they sell? Who are they selling to? What are they trying to accomplish? And you can figure out like what their major goals and objectives are just based on the product and the clients and then offering solutions on how, on how to help them accomplish that. So I think it's the account list building, the contact list building and the, the personalized data points, because if we pull five data points about the company, we could customize five different messages in social selling or five different messages in email or calls that will be all highly personalized because we did all the research in advance. And that would be like my biggest recommendation. Do all the research in advance before doing any outreach. It's helpful. It's helpful to get that research done. And uh, I, I was looking through the uh, the website here and, um, you know, it looks like that uh, you actually make a point that, you know, about 67% of a salesperson's time is spent on you know, doing research or administrative uh, administrative tasks. So, uh, you know, I would assume that using using something like Seamless would probably reduce the time. I'm, I'm going to plug in my computer. It's about to die. Keep going. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, I, well, I, I think that's important to, to kind of mention is that, you know, how AI is supposed to really help not just, you know, gather that information, but speed up the process of gathering it. So that way you can make a, uh, you know, a better strategy uh, going forward, uh, you know, with your sales approach and spend more time selling uh, and building that relationship. Yeah. I mean, even just looking like I'm signing up right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug, but I, yeah. <laughs> but getting all of that research off of your plate, I'm just curious to see how it works. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thinking about like my clients and then what I do as well. Um, yeah. It's just to, uh, to, kind of add on to what uh what at least uh, what you're saying there is that uh, you know we signing up doesn't look like it's all that difficult you know we've heard you've uh, you know listeners you, you've heard from us a number of times that using google chrome is the the best thing you can do f in social selling because there's so many different extensions that are available uh and th this is basically what it is is a chrome extension that provides access to that additional information so at least as you know you, you said you were signing up how easy was it to sign up I'm, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Um, it's pretty simple. You put in your information. Right now, it's telling me to connect my business email. As yeah, I, do it. No, I, I think it's it. going to be I'm pretty simple. Um, Elisa, you like I, it? Yeah, yeah, it's great because I've got it, and then I've got Nimble to bring them into it, and then mm -hmm. I also use Crystal. Crystal knows to get more detail studying them and all this, it lets me pre-screen them, understand what's going on. And then again, I think it's so important that uh, we use it in appropriate ways with the right timing, because if it's just a trick of throwing three things we know at them, uh, I think what's going to occur is uh, they're going to catch on to that and smell it quickly, you know, as yeah. well. It's got to be, What's the win-win in this for us? What's the added value? How am I earning the right to be in their trust? And I think that's, to me, still a fundamental. It's kind of like the person with the patience and persistence and uh, is going to outweigh the person who's just trying to throw a trick at them quickly because mm -hmm. they'll catch it. And they've got, we've got so much data coming at us. We have to have screening methods to slow it down. I think that's the fine line here is all of this is built to be able to make it a more personalized experience. If at the end of the day, though, you're still being disingenuous and you're just using something like this to try to you know, get the sale faster and you still don't really care. It's like it doesn't matter if you're doing the if you're like spamming them on LinkedIn mm -hmm. or if you're coming in with three to five pieces of data. So I think at the end of the day, it all boils down to the integrity and the ethics of the salesperson. And if you put this, this tool in the hands of somebody with great integrity, then there's going to be good results. If you put it in the hands of somebody who was just spamming before, they're going to continue mm -hmm. to do that. And there's going to be no difference. Maybe they'll get a little bit better results for a little bit, but it won't last. So it all, I mean, at the end of the day, it all boils down to the person, I think, and just giving them a tool to help empower them. Yeah. So. And, and we live in such a transparent world. The word gets out. I mean, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're just, you know, there's, there's people known to be just spammers in my community and we all go, Oh, yep. It's, you know, it's Bob spamming again. I got one on LinkedIn with five <laughs> paragraphs who has forgotten that they'd known me 20 years or something, you know, 
<laughs> and uh, and so I think you know the they don't realize the losses that are occurring by not understanding how the world's changing. That uh, that's it. Brandon's uh, technology allowed him to step out for a moment. So in, <laughs> in honor of both him and our time, I think what you know we ought to. Uh, wrap it up. And if he rejoins us, we'll reconnect as well. I, the takeaway is understanding a little bit more about how these very amazing tools exist. Get on the court to start using them. Uh, like Seamless AI gives a very nice, robust, free intro so you can experience it. You know, I started to use Crystal on a free intro to get going and now and then uh, pay for it. And then Nimble, uh, I think they have a 15 day and so forth to let them do it. But get on the court, but also team up with some people that can share ideas and talk about it. Because at least for me, some of this is changed so fast. I sometimes need another sounding board to go, do I understand this correct? Usually I'm asking Greg, of course, as well. It is a lot of data coming at us, but my gosh, you know, if you can get the data that you might learn walking into their office and looking around at the walls and use it in an appropriate way with a win-win attitude, you will have a fierce competitive advantage. Greg, I'll let you wrap it up. And at least if you have a, a quote a quote for motivation. Do you, do you want my quote or does yes, Greg want Yes, we do. Work? Okay. <laughs> totally off the cuff here. Hmm. Okay. okay. So I am going to talk about closing because yesterday I gave a talk on closing to a group of um, business owners over at City Club. And... Um, you know, I think everybody has different feelings on closing. Some people are like, I am a closer. I'm amazing at it. It gets like two people in front of me and I'm going to always close one of them. And then there's a lot of sales professionals who are really terrified of closing. So what I want everyone who's listening today to start thinking about is that closing is not at all about you. It's actually all about your prospect. And we define it as simply getting somebody from point A, which is where they are right now, to point B, which is where they want to be faster. And... Along the way, it's a matter of asking good questions and having empathy and finding out what they truly need and then help just steer them to that decision. So I don't know if that was a quote or a monologue. But <laughs> that was all that, right. That's what I got for you today. That's that sounds great. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I will leave you with a social selling tip real quick. And, and that is going to be around using LinkedIn video. I, I think that you know using video is, a, is an excellent opportunity uh, to take and connect with your network um, and show them who you are. There's some, uh, I think that um, CEOs and other sales leaders and things like that should be seriously considering using LinkedIn to help motivate their network and to take action and, um, you know, and, and um, actually help them kind of build their brand. It doesn't take much to do video. Um, you, everyone has a smartphone that, you know, hopefully they have a, you know, uh, one of the most recent iPhones or a newer Android phone that has a great uh, front facing camera uh, and, and start using it. Just make sure you have good light. Uh, make sure you hold it at the right angle too. Um, and and start recording and share. Uh, another thing too is that you don't have to use your phone. You can always take and record uh, from your from your laptop and take and upload it directly into LinkedIn. So or if it's in your camera roll on your phone, you know, take those videos and, and share them out there. Uh, you know, of course, like Facebook, uh, LinkedIn is going to be taking and using their algorithm to take and push those videos up to the top. So that's what's going to happen with it. Um, you know, if you see somebody else who shared a video, watch it, engage with it. You know, it's a great opportunity to help improve your your SSI uh, on LinkedIn, and um, and you know, definitely get the most out of using the platform. So that's my that's my tip. One last sentence from Brandon to wrap it up. Yeah. So, hey, uh, hey guys. Yeah, no, no worries, Brandon. That's just totally fine. I saw you uh, you kind of fell offline there. So we're we're, uh, we're wrapping up here, but I, I want to um, let, let's go ahead and give you just a couple minutes uh, to uh, tell us how we can learn a little bit more about you. And, uh, and any tip that you may have for, for those out there uh, with social selling or you know, just want to get started using AI for sales? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'd, I'd love to connect with different professionals on LinkedIn, of course. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn, Brandon Bornanson. Just search for me. You can find us easily if you just search for seamless.ai. Um, also, we, we'd love to give everyone that, that listens to the podcast uh, free $500 to be applied to any of the licenses. So if you just go to seamless.ai and uh, what what should the referral code be, guys, when they register? What should the referral code uh, be for the podcast? 
do podcast or social selling podcast or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. But we'll make it we'll, we'll make it a social selling podcast. Just all okay. written out. Social, social, social selling, selling podcast, podcast. Yeah. one word. One word um, written give you together. Free five hundred dollars worth Woo! of credits that you could use for seamless. Just go to seamless.ai, add to Chrome in the referral code social selling podcast. And that way we could help you hit the ground running on finding all the accounts, contacts with perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights that you need to maximize selling. Um, and to get started with social selling, uh, pick up the course, right? The great right. course that you guys launched. You got six hours of content. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of content. Yeah. Get it, listen to it at the gym in your while you're driving, on the computer, you name it. Like That's where I do most of my training. I'm at the gym, I'm on a stupid cardio machine, just put it on, listen, skill up in the car, you name it. Um, also, there's there's tons of books out there, blogs, uh, Social Selling Mastery by Jamie Shanks is also another book. Like there's, there's so much content out there. I would start reading and then just start getting involved. Deliver value though. Like out of anything you do, before you think about doing anything on social, be obsessed with delivering value to your core audience and to your core prospects. And uh, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Great to meet you. And thanks for having us today, Martin, Greg, and Elise. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, for joining us today. And of course, you know, for folks that want to learn a little bit more um, who can't spell Brandon's last name like myself, uh, <laughs> let me show notes for you. <laughs> so uh, definitely come out. Uh, you're going to look for episode 116 on uh, over at linkingintosales.com. Uh, look for episode 116. Uh, again, don't forget, uh, everyone, you could you know, take and check out the course over at socialselling.training. It's the uh, fundamentals of social selling. Uh, don't forget, you can reach out to me if you want a uh, promo code that's not going to expire on you. If you want to reach out to Martin, you can get an expired one from there. <laughs> and definitely uh, definitely do that and reach out to us. And any final thoughts, guys? That's it. That was great. Loved it. Love right, to hear good. feedback. Take care. Have a great day. Very good.